Okay, we are back. We're gonna do another paint and chat today, guys. Thanks for coming along for the ride. Okay, here's what we got going on today. Um, I have a French artillery units. I have three of them. I have two of these cannons. I believe those are the 12 pound cannons from the French. And uh, got started on those already. Now we're doing a camo olive green as a good match for what the French used in the Napoleonic era. And a good color match I found, which was actually in my citadels that I have, is this enchanted blue. Now it looks a little bright, but keep in mind we're going to be doing a wash and it's going to dull this down. And then they did a red. The caps were black, the boots were black, um, and the trim on their jackets, uh, the trim on their hats here, right here, that's going to be red. So uh, we're going to go in today. We're going to finish. Uh, we're going to finish up this uh, uh, artilleryman. He's carrying his ramrod here, and uh, we're going to go ahead and just uh, finish him out. And I'm going to show you how this turns out with this blue and a wash. So we're going to go in with the black, my Vallejo black. And we're going to add a little bit to our palette, just a tiny bit. And then I'm going to test the uh, fluidity or the viscosity of this paint. I'm going to get out my trusty Le Regiment by Army Painter. I highly recommend these guys. And let's go in. I'm going to see the, the thickness of this paint. Looks pretty good. And we're going to go in with the hat. that had black and I might have to adjust my camera here a little bit guys so we can get a little bit more on to what I'm doing here there we go that ought to work and let's go in and get this hat done everybody's been doing well I've been really busy my season got started but today I'm out you know, we've got snow here in central Ohio today it is one day past the first day of spring ironically enough but take it from a guy who's been in this outdoor industry the landscapes contracting industry for 28 years and I will tell you that this is not the first time we've had snow in March. That's for sure. So, get this guy finished off here so we can check out the colors before I do any more. I've got three here that I've mocked up, but I'm pretty sure this blue is going to work pretty well. The problem I'm having, guys, and I wanted to point this out to you, and I don't know if any of you other guys have had this same issue, but the other color that I would want to try would have been this blue, the Vallejo blue. And you can see it's very close, almost exact. Um, and this is what a lot of guys were recommending, and it was actually, if you look on, if you Google uh, French artillery uniforms for the Napoleonic era, and you look, start looking through the Victrix and the black powder uh, pictures, you'll see that it's a lot of guys are using this. The problem I'm having with these, some of these um, Vallejo colors, is the, the consistency of the paint is really kind of, uh, it's hard to explain, kind of thick. And even if you water it down a little bit with a couple drops of water, and you come back in, there's not enough pigment in the paint. And it doesn't spread spread nice and you can see how beautiful the pigment in that citadel or yeah the citadel color how nice that is and the other I have to put two coats on just to get a decent coat and that's just unacceptable so I don't know what's going on with the Vallejo and that 
pot of paint I just purchased recently within the last couple of months and uh, it was awful and I found it with uh, a couple of the other Vallejo color pigments that I have used and it not uh, having enough pigment basically what the problem is I mean you've got to go really heavy with several coats to get that pigment and to get a good coating of it so let me know if you guys are having that same issue are we going to be dealing with Vallejo as um, huh, Vallejo's quality starting to slide on their pigments I don't know now let's see this black is Vallejo and a lot of most of the Vallejo paints I use uh, these colors are amazing they go on smooth they cover really well and uh, yeah I don't know what to think of it Ooh, way too much paint on the brush there Al I'm gonna go in with this artillery pack here now these are Victrix and you know I'm really liking the Victrix guys I know there's some guys on there that on the forums that say they don't like it but I'm thinking that maybe some of their older kits um, but the details on these are excellent the problem with the Victrix i the only complaint I would have is with Victrix has been that um, They really didn't have much of a a paint guide. <laughs> it was just a cardboard fastener on the top of a plastic bag, basically. And um, that's all you got. So I did have to get onto Google, which is not a big deal. I guess that would be my complaint with uh, a lot of these manufacturers is, uh, you know, outside of the black powder starter kit you know you've got this now you can find if you look through here you can find some uh, paint schemes for the artillery but I couldn't find any in this for uh, the French artillery so there you have it all right I think that does it for the black you can see how fast that went so I'm gonna rinse my brush out here and I'll be right back and uh, we'll do the next color Okay guys, we are back. I'm going to do flat red. I'm going with the flat red. I'm going to go to my finer tip. I'm going to go to my detail brush. Hope you can see that. Detail. It's kind of faded. There it is. Detail. Let me straighten up my camera here. And there we have it. Sometimes this camera boom can be a little finicky. So we're going to go with our red. Shake it good. Now I didn't point out, I sidetracked myself as usual. Uh, so my artillery, or my battery they would call it, consists of two 12 pounders and a mortar. Okay. This is going to form my French battery. Now this was recommended by an avid black powder player and he said that you should do two cannons and a mortar and it's going to be some advantages in the game since I'm just starting out playing the game I'm taking it on his uh, good word and good faith that that is going to be the case um, so yeah so let's go right on in we're just going to dive in we're just going to finish this guy out because I'm really interested to see once I do this wash how this blue is going to turn out so blob some red in there it's nice and thin so some of my paints I have been now again this is another uh, Vallejo color I'm not having any problems with this pigment but the blues uh, the blue is horrible now I've got this um, Prussian blue I didn't have any problems with and I really like this color this is a great color and you can see I used it on the the British artillery on their on their coats, and then once you do a, a medium brown wash, 
how wonderful that turned out. All those different highlights and shadings that it gets on the jackets. Um, you know, I'm not the best painter in the world. I'm sure some guys can get better results out of that. So uh, let's go in with this uh, red. So I'm going in with my detail brush. You can see how I kind of draw the paint. I guess you can still see that. I kind of draw the paint up a little bit just to make sure I'm getting the, the bristles loaded up without getting it on to the metal part of the brush. You just don't want to do that. The most you ever want to get paint, especially on these finer tip brushes, is halfway up the brush. Right? You just don't want to you don't want to go too crazy. I'd rather have too little paint on my brush than too much. Essentially, let's get in the shot there, Al. And let's get in here. We'll get this. Uh, we'll get this piping done. I'm just not able to get on this that good today. There. Now remember, if you get just a little bit off on the edges, it's not that big of a deal because once we do a wash, it's going to fix a lot of that. That wash will get down in those little nooks and crannies and we'll, uh, it'll be a little bit more forgiving on us. I've just gotten so much better doing the Napoleonics. I'm just doing it. You know, like Nike says, just do it. I mean, the worst scenario is you have to go in with some black and kind of touch up along the sides. I mean, that's the worst that can happen to you. I mean, it's not like the end of the world if you get a little red paint outside the margins, you know what I'm saying? So we're gonna go in with just a little bit more on that piping right there. Oh yeah, I'm happy with that. And like I've said in other videos, guys, um, let's go up a little bit. You might get a little bit more of my work light in the shot. Boy, it sounds like my dogs are going nuts upstairs. So I got my red cuffs here. I'm gonna go in and get these red cuffs done. Oh yeah, that's a sharp looking uniform. I gotta say. <sighs> Why did I just do that? And some days, guys, I, if I'm having a bad day with my paint, I just hang it up. I go do something else. I'll do a... I got several things left to build. And you know, if I'm like today, look at this. <laughs> I've already got red paint on my fingers because I brushed my brush up against my finger. You know, it's like anything in life, guys. Sometimes you just have a bad day. And why fight it, you know? Why fight it? Especially with modeling. Now, if I'm not working and I'm having a bad day, I gotta plow through. I've gotta plow through. I got work to do. I just have to shake it off. So, uh, yeah, just been busy work. My season has gotten started. I've got a, a fair amount of work done, and then the weather's been kind of uncooperative so far this season. We've had a lot of cold, we've had a lot of wind, we've had some rain. Just a little bit of everything. Makes life interesting. Um, so I got a little bit of blue on that strap. I'm going to have to go in with some white as a touch up in the last lap here, so to speak. So I'm going to touch just the tip of his jacket is red. And I'm not going to get too crazy with this red piping, guys. 
Ah. Is it gonna be one of those days? Now I'm gonna go have to go in with some blue. I got a little bit of red on his. Now this is gonna be tricky. I might do this red piping at the end after I've done the flesh. Although the flesh might hide some of that. I think we'll be fine once I do a once I do a wash. I'm not pressing very hard. I do this fine piping detail. I'm just very lightly hitting it with the brush. Now the other side of his jacket down here. I'm gonna get down in here. shouldn't put so much paint on the palette if I'm just doing one guy. I'm leaving all that white. All of that stuff there is white. Um, you're not really going to see the inside of that cuff. I'm not going to go in right in here. It's too tight. And that's one of the things about tabletop standard. But I'm going to have to go back in at the end with some blue and just touch up touch up a few spots. Like we got a little spot there. I want to straighten up <laughs> Excuse me, I want to straighten up that line right there. So I'll go back in. And the final step. And I'll straighten that out. And then... I don't think anything else. The epaulettes, he doesn't really... This is a must be a, a private. He doesn't have any epaulettes. You know what I'm saying? The, I'll throw some red on here so you'll see what I'm talking about. Up on his shoulders like this must be a either a, a sergeant or an officer and I'm gonna go ahead and just show you how those are also red on these guys okay, okay uh, let's see uh, we need to come in I'm gonna come in with some uh, I'm gonna come in with some brown some shade of brown I'm going to hit that sword. I'm going to hit his canteen with a lighter shade of brown. Um, and then that looks like a bayonet. So we'll hit that with some gunmetal. And then... Oh, he does have a slight... Oh, he does have epaulets. I just painted it blue. Okay. I was wrong. So let's go in with the red. Right here. And hit that. And then on the other side, looks like it's just more like a shoulder band. Yeah, I like that. Sharp uniforms. All right, guys, we're going to come back in. My next color. Okay guys, a couple of the colors I've picked out here to do just some really small details like the canteen and the swords of scabbard. Um, you know, these being low, more lower, they're not going to have a real fancy scabbard. It's probably going to be made more out of leather. Uh, so I'm going to use the red leather and I'm going to use just a basic flat brown. Okay, nothing fancy. I'm going to show you what I do sometimes. Now, this is a bad example. I'm not really giving you a good example here, but that was too much paint. I open up the cap and it's a it's a fresh brand new bottle, so it's really full. And like I said when I squeeze a little bit out, I will typically put a little water in if it seems a little thick. So I'm just gonna do one drop, literally one little drop, you can see there. And I'm gonna do oh, my red leather. I love this color. I use this a lot red leather. You gotta get it. Good stuff. You can use it on so many things. It's really good on like World War II uh, American boots or like paratroopers. You know. Just a little drop. And I picked this up the other day. It's I'm looking forward to using this on my cannons. The brass. Alright, so again, going with our detail brush. I'm gonna 
pick this up now. I'm going to I'm going to use the dark or the flat brown on his just this section of his scabbard. I'm going to touch up the the upper and the lower part of the scabbard with just uh, gunmetal. Uh, just that little section with the scabbard. Just make sure I look around, make sure I'm not seeing any white all the way around. That's why I love these caps. Drink Gatorade, guys, or Powerade, and save your caps. All right, and you know what? While well, I'm thinking about it, I just decided his hair is going to be brown too. So we're going to kill two birds with one stone here with his hair. This guy just happens to have brown hair. All right. So I'm going to go in and get that done. Multitasking, guys. Multitasking. And again, this is table top standard. I'm not entering these in a painting competition, but I do want them to look nice. I'm still going to go back. I'm going to do some touch ups. Also, just wanting to make sure that this all little section of black here that I didn't do a good job on. I'm gonna hit that with some more black. Okay, now I'm gonna go in with my leather. I'm gonna load up the paint. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna get that that little canteen right there. Alright, and then I'll come back in with some gunmetal. You can even like do little little tiny tidbits on the bottom with the brass if I want to. Alright. I'm gonna touch that. I'm left like that little little strap like that see there's a little a little interest to the eye see like a so the other thing I've been working on guys I my wife and I have launched a new channel I mentioned in the last video geez I can't believe how some people were being complete jerks about <laughs> monetizing my channel I mean come on guys you know I'm a capitalist. <laughs> you know, I don't start I didn't start this channel to make money, obviously. But if I can get some goodies from Amazon and we're not talking a lot of stuff, I think my affiliate for last month was $43.34. <laughs> you know, so I'm not getting rich, but it does help buy a model kit or two. You know, that's kind of nice. I lost, I don't know, I must have lost three or four subscribers because they were like one of the guys and I deleted the comment. See, dude, you're just making this about money. Yeah, right. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> Bye. Anyways, I can't even monetize the stupid YouTube channel. You don't even make much money. I think in four years, I made a little over $100 in ad, in ad revenue. Okay. We're not talking a lot of money here, guys. It is nice to have a few bucks to offset some of the costs and some of the time that I put into making the videos. And uh, my new channel, I've, I've been learning and, and uh, studying new editing techniques. I don't know if I'm going to be able to use a lot of those things on this channel because a lot of it's uh, show, show and tell type, type videos. But uh, later today and tomorrow, since uh, we are getting a lot of snow come through and I'm kind of stuck in the house and down here in the ultimate man cave, uh, I will do some of the play-by-play -play on my new battle that I've got going on here over on the battle table. And um, I will uh, probably do more editing on that and even some voiceovers because uh, those are some of the new techniques I've learned recently. I want to keep him out. I've got another cannon to do. Uh, so we're just going to keep the camera rolling, guys. I'm going to go in with my, uh, 
this is always my dilemma with these colors, these metal colors. You know, do I want to do a natural steel, which is lighter? And then there's the gunmetal, gray. Sometimes I feel like this is almost too dark once you put a wash on, so I'm going to stick with the natural steel, you know, as a nice highlight. And again, I still have this, this dropper palette is what I'll call it. And I'm literally just putting down a drop since I'm using just such a little amount. I'm just going to do bop, one drop. And you can see, if you can, how that paint kind of stood up. And it's kind of the problem I've had, and this is the other pigment I've had a little bit of problems with. It seems really thick. This seems to cover pretty well. The other spot I noticed on here was I needed to do, I'm gonna do natural steel on his rammer. I mean, it's got enough pigment in it, but it just seems thick even if I add a little water with a dropper bottle or a dropper. Uh, it still doesn't seem to loosens it up some. And I'm pretty sure I've already done that with this color. I've added some some water to the bottle. It's not like it's gotten dry or anything. It's just that it just doesn't seem to have the flowability that their other paints are having. I don't know. You guys can leave some comments below, but it may just be an age issue. You know, maybe this sat too long in the warehouse. I don't know. It's really weird. Um, so I'm going in with the sword. I'm going to hit that with the bolt gun metal or the natural steel. I'm going to hit his bayonetta with the natural steel. I think I'm gonna go in, I think I'm gonna hit that and that with brass, because I do want to try out that brass. I think that would look good. I'm going with the natural steel, I'm gonna hit the top of his canteen, the spigot of his canteen. Um, maybe touch a few of the buttons. A lot of buttons uh, on his cuffs. One, two, three. And his cuff over here on his jacket. One, two. There's three buttons there, but I'm just going to do two dots. It's too much. You end up running together. He has his little ammo pouch. I'm just gonna do just a touch of natural steel on his gun pouch where those it looks like he's got cannons cannon barrels crossed on there. Just a you know, just a touch of highlight there. And um, I think I'm gonna do the brass and I think I'm gonna go back in with his flesh. We're, then we're gonna be ready for a wash. So I'm just gonna keep the camera rolling here guys. And just knock this out. Knock it out. Knock it out. So, I think I got enough room there to do my brass. Gonna go in with my brass. Let's see the viscosity of this thing. Let's see what we got. Oh, that's gonna be nice. Just one little drop. It's nice and full. The bottle, that is. But, uh,. And then another guy, <laughs> when I made that last fiddle video, he was upset because I was talking about my other channel <laughs> that I started. Unbelievable, folks. Just unbelievable. People are too sensitive. Uh, anyway, my new channel, <laughs> I'm doing with my wife and some of the stuff that we do, the fun stuff we do, because uh, it's just enjoyable to me. I like traveling and doing things and I thought I would share, I want to share, a lot of people sit around and say there's just nothing to do, there's plenty to do, you just have to go out and do it. And I'm going to share at least in that area that I live in, and I'm sure the areas you live in, 
have similar types of activities to do. It's like, guys, we can't just sit in our man caves all the time. There's a beautiful world out there. Um, so the channel is called Exploring with the Smiths, and I want you guys to subscribe because I want you guys to see the fun that we have. Oh yeah, I really like that brass. That's nice. Nice color, guys. Oh, I knew what I was going to do. Dug on it. Alright. I think that'll do it with the brass. Just a tiny little bit. I know it seems kind of wasteful, but typically on a, if I wasn't making a video, I would use up those colors on these other two guys. But I'm just trying to... I'm not trying. I'm cranking this guy out. So before this brown dries, I thought, you know what? That won't be such a bad color to use on his ramrod. In fact, you know what I'm going to do? I, gotta, I just had another idea. That seems like it's going to be a little on the dark side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, the yellow and the red, and the gunmetal. I'm going to add a little bit more to that light brown. I'm going to lighten that up just a tad bit. See? Sometimes you just got to do stuff on the fly, guys. See how I lightened up that brown over there? I just added in a little bit lighter brown. Just to try to use it up. You know, I don't like to be wasteful either, guys, so... I'm just going to go in and hit this with my regiment brush. I probably got a little too much paint on the brush because I was using it to mix, which I typically don't do, but... It's not the end of the world. All right. I can get some of the extra paint off by doing this on the ramrod. Just go with it, guys. If it doesn't work out, just wait for the color to dry and then just go back over it again with another color. Um, so yeah, exploring with the Smiths. Yeah, so hiking, biking, uh, little day trips we take places. Um, something to really look forward to on the new channel is we had just booked for next January. It takes, you know, we start planning things month, a month, months and months in advance. I'm just a planner. And uh, we're going to do a 10 day cruise to the South Caribbean next uh, January. And I'll be videotaping most of it. A lot of it and we'll be putting that up on the channel so we should be sharing all the places we go the things we do tips and tricks for planning a trip um, do's and don'ts those kinds of things plus it's just gonna be fun to watch all right so now we're ready to go in with the flesh we're going with the flesh chai tea highly recommend it guys Chai tea. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. I'm going to put down my regiment. We're going to go back to the detail. Now, we've talked about this on other paint chats on the colors I use for flesh. Now, one of my favorite colors is, you know, obviously people are going to go straight for the medium flesh tone, right? I don't know. I kind of like this tan yellow because this is a little lighter. And um, again, the other thing I, I have to stress, especially to you new guys, is um, when you put your wash on, especially if it's like, a, I like to use a medium brown, just a tiny bit. Well, I guess in Vallejo it's brown. So there's my brown, I use a lot, that a lot, and I'll show you that I've got dark brown, There's more dark brown that hasn't been opened yet. I do use dark brown a lot. And, um, I don't know. I've got this brown. I haven't, I just had a thought. I don't know if, uh, so I used the gray, I got the green. Oh no. 
Okay, so I do have another bottle of just the straight brown. I don't know, I'm torn. Do I want to use... Do I want to use the brown or the dark brown? I think I want to try the dark, the, the brown, the standard brown wash first. And of course I always use my black. I've got black handy in case I need it. But I like these bigger bottles, guys. These really last a long time. I highly recommend it. Um, but let's go in with our flesh, and then we're gonna we're gonna do a wash, and we're gonna see how this sucker turns out. It's gonna be interesting, and that's why I kind of like experimenting like this. Just like I'd like to do play test lists for my armies when I play these games. It's fun to just toy around with ideas and see if they got if they work. You know. So yeah, I've basically been spending a lot of time the last couple of weeks on my downtime uh, learning about editing videos because the travel videos I'm doing uh, are going to lend themselves the type of uh, video work that I'm doing lends itself to doing more editing as opposed to what I'm doing here. Uh, I can shorten up these little strep stretches and cut things out, but uh, then it doesn't seem as spontaneous, I don't think. Plus, I really need to be careful that I'm showing you and explaining stuff to you on this channel. Now, someday when I can do Battle Port Reports Justice, I'm thinking I'm going to end up doing a lot of over-voicing, what they call overdubbing. I just go back through and I actually narrate the the scenes and I can cut the battle reports down so I'm cutting out a lot of stuff that that just is dead dead space so to speak so I have been learning a lot about that and uh, how to do it how to add the music how to do special effects and things with cutaways and things there's a lot to it I've got a really nice program it's like everything the Germans have a saying and I've said it before alles anfang ist schwer you Germans out there know what I'm saying every beginning is difficult it is hard because things in the beginning are all new you're learning and experiencing just like painting miniatures guys you can't just give up you if you get outside the margins on your painting just go back in with the other color and just do a touch up at the end look your miniature over just shrug it off and the more you do it and the more uh, persistent you are uh, the better you're gonna get at painting Right? I'm still learning. I'm still getting better every time I paint. But you can see how this is really starting to come together now. And I got a little spot on those pants. I may have to do now, one of my little tricks sometimes I do, guys. If it's just a tiny little spot like that, I'll actually get out my little, my little mini screwdriver. <laughs> and sometimes I can just knock that little spot off. And then once I do a wash, you can't even see it. Yeah, I think that might work this time. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And you'll see when we get that wash on there, guys, the details on the strap. And there's a little strap that goes down to his canteen that's a little got a little bit different variations on it. And then that wash will get down on all those little nooks and crannies. And you may have heard it on other channels that a wash can hide a multitude of sins, especially when you're going for tabletop standard mass infantry battles, right? I've got two, four, six, eight. I got almost ten more, nine more, <laughs> well, really, eleven more artillerymen, and I've got three of these uh, artillery officers, and actually, um, I'm going to be using them as unit commanders for my uh, infantry units on the board because you have to have a, a commander for for your different uh, regiments and that's what the these guys came as artillery dudes but they also had little swords 
and I decided, you know what, I'm going to take those guys and I'm going to make them some of my unit commanders so I can get multi-use uh, out of them. All right, now I'm going to let him dry and then we're going to go in with the wash and going to keep the camera rolling. Um, but I wanted to highlight how good these uh, Victrix French artillery are. It's just great detail. I really like them. Uh, you know, and then these are my British over here to the side. I haven't started yet. And these are Perry. And these are all metal. I do like the metal. Don't get me wrong. And I really like the Perry. They, they both, they're, you know, honestly, they both have their, I don't even say minuses. They're all good. The Perry has excellent detail. Um, they seem to be a little stubbier dudes, a little thicker stock, like they've been better fed <laughs> troops. If you want to look at this, there's another Brit guy. So you guys can kind of get a comparison. Uh, you can see he's a little stockier dude. He's a little shorter dude. And the details are great, especially on their jackets and stuff. Look at this guy. I mean, that's just really, really good detail. And the, the poses and the... I mean, they're, these are really uh, works of art, honestly. Little miniature sculptures. And then once we get them painted... That's why I say, guys, this is an art form. It really is. Now here's the, he's got the, I forget what they call that, the touch point, the touch, uh, he's the guy that's setting off the cannon, right? Look at that pose. Now he's a little taller, the proportionate, the proportions, here's the same, the same guy in the British cannon. Let's try to get them even with their bases, because this guy's a little higher right here. I mean, you're not seeing much of a difference in the height. So you just say that this guy was five foot six and this guy's six footer, all <laughs> right? You know, you, you got a lot of guys out there, it seems like on these forums, they just, oh, the Victrix is just not the right scaling and blah, 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 blah. And then this guy with his rammer, but only he's in a completely different pose. So they all make complete individuals. So here's a perfect example. So here's three different guys that are touching off and setting off the cannon. The three different cannons. Two cannons and one mortar. <laughs> but you see they're all different. They're all individuals. They're all complete individuals. Right? That's what you want. You don't want three of the same. And that gives the that gives the model's character. And that's gonna give that little unit that I will be putting on these bases that I showed the last video. It's going to give this like it's its own little mini diorama. And in 15, 20, 25 years when I'm long gone and my grandkids and my, my son are playing with these. And I, I really hope someday, you know, these, these get passed down. I really do. And uh, they're, they're going to be treated like uh, family heirlooms. Family heirlooms. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. He's, he's dry enough. We're going to go in. I'm going to show you the entire process of, of what we're going to do here. The trial and error, the whole nine yards. So I also use gray sometimes. I've got gray wash. Uh, yeah. Sky's the limits, guys. Try on kinds of things. There's greens. Now I have those in smaller bottles. There's greens and there's reds and there's blues. All different kinds of washes you can use for like sci-fi. So we're going to go in with just a little bit of wash. Again, this is our medium brown. Now, this is a dry, technically a dry brush, small dry brush, and this will come in your kit of three. My favorite kit. I don't think I have any unopened, unopened anymore. Uh, but you get these for 15 bucks on Amazon. Check out my other links on my other videos. Uh, you get discounts. That's the other advantage of Amazon affiliates, guys. And uh, you can get discounts. All right, now we're going to go in with this guy. I'm going to start back here. I'm going to go in with my medium brown. And I'm going to hit his pants nice and liberally, especially his straps. I'm going to go up here under his chest. Up onto his hand. 
up onto his face. I don't want to go too crazy on the face, so we may come back and pick some of that up here in a little bit. But you see how beautiful these acrylics, these water-based acrylics, how fast they dry. See what I'm doing there? I blew some of that wash off of his face. Just doing that. So that way it's not hiding too much of the detail. And uh, get all this good. You can see how it's starting to shape up. I may have to go in with a little white. It looks like on a strap right there and a strap right there. And just highlight the strap a little bit with just a little bit of white. But again, probably the 50th time. You know, this is why I um, I use the white base coat, guys. Because then I don't have to mess with all the straps. I literally just paint around the straps. And you can see how great he's turned out. Just futzing around. If I assembly line paint these guys. If I really wanted to, I could crank this, this, these three uh, units out in one day easily. I tend to, since I've got other projects going on, I tend to just kind of, I don't know, do five or six here or there, uh, just because of my schedule, and I'm just really busy. All right, I hope that uh, gives you some good pointers, guys. It shows you some of the, the miniature range that's out here, the Victrix versus the Perry that they really are compatible. They have, they both are, are, as far as I'm concerned, nothing but pluses. Um, they both have their strengths. So as this guy's drying, I'm blowing him a little bit and get that, that wash to go around. I hope you guys can see that detail. And then when he's completely dry, I'll go back in and just critique him and I'll say, yeah, I need to do a little touch up there. I need to come back and do a little bit of touch up there, but right where that little red spot was on his pants, right about where his thigh is. See, I scraped a little bit of it off, and then once I put the wash on there, you can't even tell where it is. So that's what you're looking at, guys. Right? It's not really that hard. Just a little touch ups here and there. You can see how that strapping is the really coming out is that is that wash dries and I'm gonna stick with that that's just the straight brown that's not the dark brown <clears throat> so I think the, the regular browns gonna work just fine and you see how it's muted it still seems a little shiny now because that that wash is still drying and then keep in mind I'm gonna be using a flat acrylic um, top coat to protect the model and the diorama in the future and it is a water base I've shown in my other videos and I use an airbrush I put it on with an airbrush. You can buy the same product and brush it on with a brush if you want to but I'm trying to stick with all water base you know, so we don't get the fumes it's easy cleanup and you know they're as, just as good as the oil base they hold up just as well I've got miniatures over here and my tanks and things for Flames of War I mean I've played for years years with some of these and I've done the same method to those models and they hold up really well unless you drop them on the floor. Alright guys, hope that helps. Ciao and we'll see you next time.